G'day, hello, welcome, konnichiwa, yokoso. I'm Luke from Overland Campus Japan, and in this video, I'm going to do a demonstration of how to set up and pack down our brand new for 2023 beige sand jimny and blue jimny shiera. Come check them out, they're both very similar builds. We love them, and we hope you do too. Come have a look. Great, starting from the trunk, just open the rear door nice and gently. The first thing you'll see is a large area for your luggage. It's 80 centimeters deep, 60 centimeters wide, and 80 centimeters high. It's enough room for two large luggages or three smaller luggages. A little pro tip, while you're traveling, I like to put my luggage in the rear, but when I'm camping, I highly recommend that one person puts their luggage in the front seat and the other person puts their luggage in the passenger seat. That way you can access your luggage from the passenger side or the driver's side and it keeps this area open. Next, onto the rear door, there's a rear drop-down table. You simply unhook the latches and it folds down. There's also a chopping board here. You can put the gas cooker on here, you can put some items on here. You can't stand on here and you cannot sit on here. It's not that strong. To put it back, simply put the levers back on. One, two, very simple. Coming over to the kitchen set, the portable battery unit that powers the kitchen and also gives power for the roof tent is hidden inside the corner here and that will already be turned on for your rental. You may, however, simply need to turn on the fridge when you've gone shopping. It's a simple on and off button. And the fridge is here, 17 liters. It's quite a lot of space. Moving on over here, there's a snow peak cooking set. So there's a large pot for cooking rice or stews. There's a small fry pan. And then again, there's two smaller snow peak uh, aluminum cooking set in here as well. Behind the pots and pans, under here, you find a typical Asian gas cooker, a gas cassette, a toasted sandwich maker, and also a large fry pan. So lots of different cooking tools inside here. On top of this section, you'll find there's your salt, your pepper, your olive oil, and uh, a coffee set. Behind this, you'll find your cups, sauces, and bowls. So very quickly, you've got your tools for cooking here, and you've got your tools for eating here. Next, under here, this simply pulls out, and you can pick it up and put it on the table here or your camping table. Inside this unit is all your eating tools. So knives and forks and also your cooking tools, spatulas and all sorts of different tools for cooking a great meal for while you're traveling. Very simply, you close it back up and it can just slide simply nice and sturdy away in there. Next is the pull out mechanism. There is a red lever and you simply pull this out like such. Coming here, you'll find camping seat, camping seat, camping table, the stool, which is gonna be really helpful for when you get in and out of the tent. And it's also helpful just to put things on top of it. And inside this white bag here is a fire pit. The campgrounds in Japan will sell you wood and or charcoal, and everything simply goes nice and neatly back in here. To return the slider, Simply push the red button and it pushes in on itself. Under the roof of the chimney, you'll find that there are two pillows and two towels. The pillows, of course, belong to the roof tent, but while you're traveling, I like to put the pillows up here. It makes it a bit easier to close this roof tent. That's a very quick introduction of all the different items, how to open and close the, the trunk area of the chimney Sierra. Moving on. Great, now moving on we have the side gull wing storage compartment. Very easy to open, one, two, and it simply opens. The first thing you'll see is there's access to power here. So you have 110 volts and also USB power available. We have camping lights, very simple, twist on, twist off, and to recharge, the USB is here, simply connect it for recharging. There's fairy lights, there's a big Bluetooth speaker. There's also another large outdoor light here. Over here is a cleaning set, so everything to do with cleaning, please clean and maintain as you go. You'll find wet wipes, paper towels, there's also some tools here to help you light a fire. So fire starters, there's some gloves there for handling the wood, and uh, also very important, 
there's some pegs here in a green bag that belong to the awning. We'll talk about that later. In the winter months, we provide an electric blanket that will be inside the roof tent. This is the controller for the electric blanket and we will leave that inside the gull wing. Very simply, you connect one section to the electric blanket and the other section to the power system here. It's okay to close this. The cable can run into the roof tent through the window. An important point when you're closing the roof tent is to disconnect the controller and take it out of the roof tent, putting it either in the side gull wing or in the glove box. If you try and close the tent with this inside, you can break it. Please be careful. Then very simple, put everything back to close. Make sure this channel and this channel is clear. Simply push it down, one, two, and you're done. Let's move on to the front section. Great, moving on to the front driving section. It's an automatic keyless vehicle. Just put this somewhere safe. It needs to be inside the vehicle in order to start. Very simple, foot on brake, push the start button to start. It's a typical automatic, um, there's a handbrake. In the center console, there's also an off-road function. You won't need that for your journey. There's a large navigation system, which is in English. Very simply, you can connect your phone with Bluetooth and use CarPlay. Most of my customers simply like to put their phone here and connect the system and use Google Maps. Otherwise, you can put your phone somewhere else in one of the pockets down here and simply connect to the navigation system and use Google Maps. To operate the windows, the buttons are in the center console. The far left button opens the left window. The far right button opens the right window. Also, as you're getting comfortable, you'll find that there's two drinking waters and some driving snacks in the car already for you to enjoy. Some important things to note, the ETC or electronic toll charging system is already installed inside the vehicle. So that means when you're on the highway or the freeway, you'll see English ETC and very simply that's where you go. There'll be a boom gate that opens like such, slow down and drive through. So then after you come back, within two days, the computer will tell us the charges for where you went. We simply send that to you by email and ask for you to pay us back. This car is a regular gasoline car. When you pick it up, it'll be full of gasoline. Please bring it back full of gasoline. To open the gasoline, it's simply down here by the driver's seat. Let me show you how to put the gasoline in. Most gas stations in Japan, someone will actually come and help you and just repeat the term regular and they'll understand. If in doubt, please ask someone. In Japan, there are three types of gasoline, diesel, premium, and regular. We want the regular. 99% of the time, it's a red Bowser. Please get it right. Great, now let's move on to the roof tent. I'm six foot four and a lot of you are gonna be smaller than me. So your best friend for opening and operating the roof tent will be the provided stool. Grab your stool, simply get it ready. From here, there's two latches, one and two. We simply wanna push this one up, push this one up. Make sure you've got a big open space clear space guys no trees no obstructions and then from here you can simply push it up and the tent will open like such with this design we have a rear ladder you can stand here 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 and here you can also stand on top of the tire please do not stand on top of the car please do not put your shoes it scratches the roof please don't stand on the side bumper. It's not strong enough to take the weight. Next, we grab our stool and we'll put it beside underneath the rear ladder. It makes it easier for you to go up. As you climb up into the tent, either on top of the bedding or under the futon, you'll find these two tent poles. And these very simply will connect into here, into the eyelet, and the other one on the other side. Bending it over and putting into position. And that's it. 
This is the main way how you go in and out of the roof tent. The bedding will be inside and you'll find that the pillows are also inside the main cabin area here. There are three major windows. They're all controllable by zips. It's very simple to operate. For sleeping, I highly recommend putting the pillows in the front of the tent. It gives you the greatest sense of space and the best view looking out. So now we've opened the roof tent. It's enough room for two people. It's 120 centimeters wide and 210 centimeters long. There's three main windows which you can control simply with zips. There's insect nets on each window. And as I mentioned before, I highly recommend sleeping with the pillows in the front of the tent. It gives you the greatest sense of space. Just remember to take them out and flatten the bedding when you go to close the tent. For the winter season, we do have the electric blanket installed inside the roof tent. Remember, you can just simply connect the electric blanket running the cable out the side of the window into the gull wing power station. Remember to disconnect it and put it back in the car when you're closing the roof tent. And then when it comes time to closing the tent, we just follow the same process in reverse. So take out the pillows and put them inside the car. Coming back up, we'll take off our two supporting beams, put them somewhere safely, either on top of the bedding or under the mattress. Folding everything down. A bit of an important tip, make sure the bedding is nice and flat. If it's all jumbled like this, it's impossible to close the tent. So make the bedding nice and flat. Pillows, of course, are inside, and then you can simply come up. I like to pull these sides in and pulling down. Now, as you're pulling down, pull in the sides of the canvas, pulling in all the sides as much as possible. And then when I get to this position, I will stop and come down. And we wanna make sure that all of the tent is inside. So we come aground, pushing everything inside. Everything must be inside. Everything must be inside. Everything must be inside. Everything must be inside. Then after you've tucked everything inside, slowly close it to expel all the air. You can pull it down, putting one latch on, putting the second latch on, down and down. Now, you can't sit on top of the roof tent, you can't stand on top of the roof tent, don't go up here. Then before you go, just do a final check. Make sure everything is inside the tent, nothing sticking out. So next, we're gonna talk about the awning. For just one person, the awning is a little tricky to open and close. So grab your partner or grab a friend or just recruit someone from the campsite next to you to give you a hand. Come on, let's get this done. Just open the two latches, one, two, like such, and then this will pop down. The next thing you'll see is these two supporting arms. Take one out and simply rest it. Like such. You'll find these green socks on these two supporting arms. Please do not lose them. And just rest them here like such onto the ground gently, like such. Put these somewhere safe so you don't lose them. Next, let's grab this together. And we simply walk away from the car as far as possible. And stop here. Now make a nice vertical height, okay? And then using the simple twists off, you simply twist and keep them held. Then I'll ask you to come to the center and hold this in the center, holding it nice and tight. Then the other person will go and get the other supporting arms. 
The two support arms with the black tape here and also here, they belong into the internal section that has the catches. Next, we want to take them out like such. Pulling one out, simply extending and attaching and then twist and lock into position. Go getting the other one. Same thing, pull out, attaching, twist and lock. Pulling it out like such, nice and tight. You can also adjust the height to how you might like it. Something really important, we have the verticals in position and we have the horizontals in position. Twist and lock, twist and lock. But that's not strong enough. We need to fix it with the pegs. So inside the gull wing side window, We grab our pegs, there'll be four pegs, two pegs into the ground here, use the back of the axe, bang, bang, nice and fixed. Same goes for this side. Into the ground, hammer them in, nice and fixed. If it's raining, I recommend putting the awning on a slight gradient down or a slight gradient up. It's here basically to keep you out of the elements, either the hot sun or the rain. So that was a quick setup of the pull-out awning. If you're experiencing very windy conditions or very, very harsh conditions, it's advisable not to use the awning. The wind can catch it, it can fly up, it can hit the car, it can fall down onto you and it can cause injury. Another thing, please refrain from making a large fire under the awning. So there you have it, that was a quick setup of the awning. Now we're gonna repeat the process in reverse to close it. So first step would be taking our pegs out from the ground and taking the pegs out from the ground here and then moving over, get your friend back into the center part, loosening the, the horizontal arms and folding them in. On the horizontal arms, you'll find that there's black tape. They go into the special hook catches inside the awning. One. Two. Next, I'll hold this one, grab the other side on the pole, on the, on the pole, yep, like such, yep. And then lift it up and simply roll in. Rolling in all the way, pulling down the gull wingo, wing, just popping it in. And then remember, the socks must go on here. Grabbing one of the socks and that simply folds in. Grabbing the other sock, and that can fold in. It's important to make sure everything is nice and neat and tidy inside. Have a little check to see if everything's inside. Something's catching. So I want to see which one is catching. This one is catching. We will extend it a bit further. Put the sock on and putting it inside. One last final check, we should be good to close. Very simple, pushing it up, latch on, one. Same on this side, latch on and on. So one and two, the two latches are secure, nothing sticking out, you have successfully packed up the side awning for the Jimmy Sierra. Thanks for watching. That concludes this video of a demonstration on how to set up and pack down our brand new beige Jimny and blue Jimny. As with all of our campers, we truly ask that you look after them and treat them as your own. And we look forward to having you for your Japan adventure soon.